since we came to this place. I think this is the first time in this year, amen. Yeah, we are so happy to be here and to have a time of fellowship with you, amen. Yeah. We've been planning to come through, I think, beginning of the year. Yeah. But uh, those logistic problems that were here on campus, uh, yeah. so we couldn't make it, amen. Yeah. But we'd like to thank God today we are here. Uh, we are just expecting something from the Lord. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. No man can uh, tell us much, but it is God who can change our situations. It is God who can answer our prayers. Amen. It is God who knows our needs. Amen. Amen. So we are trusting in Him this evening. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Uh, don't worry if I'm a little bit tired. I was in the exams, so you know what I'm to pray for. Is train you and train you, yeah. and you and stretch you, yeah. amen. So I went through all that today, but by God's grace, we are here in yeah. the house of the Lord. We are not complaining, we are happy that God has given us again time in His house. Yeah, but also, we still have sober minds to be that we, we ought to be believers, amen. Yeah. And we ought to trust in God in everything. Yeah. All these things will come to an end, amen. Yeah. We are not just ranting this thing, we are not just saying empty words, we know it's going to happen. You know? Hallelujah. Uh, all the other prophecies, when we read the scriptures, they have come to fulfillment. Amen. And we are waiting for the fulfillment of scriptures in our time. You know? Amen. That's right. So, without much waste of time, uh, I understand it's an evening service, a uh, prayer or afternoon service, I'll call it. We won't be very long. I just want to maybe bring a thought, something that can encourage us in the way of the Lord. Amen. So let's bow our heads and invite our Lord. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, most gracious God, once more, Lord, we come before you this evening. Amen. Lord, with expectations in our hearts. We yes, have been through many things through the day. The devil has been throwing things at us. Mm. And as humans, sometimes we do uh, stumble. But we've come here in your house, Lord, for refilling and for fulfillment, Almighty God. We come here to receive strength from your weight. Mm. As we are about to read your weight, Father, we like to invite you in our midst that you may come and expound and teach our hearts and bring faith in our hearts, for it is said, faith comes by hearing, yes. and is hearing by the word. We are here, Almighty Father, I invite you that you may come and anoint the words that will be spoken, and the hearts that will be listening, that we may all receive the anointing yes. and the revelation for this hour. All this we ask, trusting and believing. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 God bless you, saints. Amen. amen. So, let's read from our Bibles. Uh, I've got two scriptures I would like us to read from, to start off. The first one is in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 30, verse 4 uh, and verse 5, amen, and it reads as follows, just going to try and read it from this line here, Psalms 30, verse 4 and verse 5, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of peace, and give thanks unto the and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Amen. The second scripture, we look in the second book of, of Peter, chapter 1. Amen. Second Peter, chapter 1. Okay, second Timothy chapter, second Peter chapter one, I'm sorry, uh, verse 19 and verse 20, and it reads as follows. We have also a more sure way of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Hallelujah. For the prophets, the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, 
but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may take your seats. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. So, maybe for uh, our evening stop, I would like to take on the subject. I'm going to call it Joy Comes in the Morning. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what uh, I follow those words from uh, verse 5 in, in, in the book of Psalms. Amen. So we talk about the joy that comes to a believer. We know that this is symbolic. Amen. Yeah. That's right. This is very symbolic. We're not talking about a day break as you know it. Yeah. Although in natural type is spiritual. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We know that the morning uh, talks of a lot of things. Uh, when morning breaks, it talks about vision. When vision becomes clear, things that you couldn't see in the dark, now they become clear. Like morning speech of life. Amen. You know, everything comes alive. We, we live from the light. Yeah. Then again, the morning speech of joy. Mm-hmm. Remember, in the morning, the first thing that happens in the morning, you hear uh, the first thing and everything. So yeah. when you're talking about the morning, you're talking about that season when things open up, when yeah. all the things yeah. is removed. Amen. Now the Bible says here, uh, and I want to repeat that verse uh, in the book of Psalms, just to uh, get to it again. Uh, so again. It says, Sing unto the Lord, all ye saints of his. There's, a, there's something to sing about. And there, is, there is something about singing. Amen. Yeah, that is why the Bible says, Sing, all ye saints of the Lord, sing up, sing, sing, sing unto the Lord, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Because Hallelujah. once you remember what the holiness of the Lord is, you, you, you have to give praise to that. Amen. Amen. And says, for his anger endureth for a moment. So we you know as Christians we go through a lot of things and yes. sometimes we upset the Lord. But if you, something happens and you know you might have accepted the Lord, the Bible here says his anger in, is just for a moment Amen. and then his favor is life. Once God is going to his favor, he has spared your life to show you his favor. This once he shows you favor, that is life. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, and Noah found favor with God. That's yes. right. And we know how far that favor of the Lord took him. Yes, sir. You know, he was rescued from a destruction of the flood by God's favor. Amen. So we have to find favor. And Mary, she, she, she went through something that never happened to anyone on this planet. And she was highly favored. Yes. So once you are in the Lord's favor, yeah. that is good for your life. Yes. Yes. Now we know that we have received the weight from the Lord in this hour, yes. which is God's favor for this day. Amen. Amen. And that is here to change us, yes. to bring us into a supernatural realm Hallelujah. where supernatural things happen. Amen. Amen. Then the Bible goes on to say, weeping may last, uh, may enjoy, may enjoy for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Now again in the book of Peter, the uh, the Bible says that we we also have a sure word of prophecy, yes. and you must hold unto it like a, a, a candle light ah, until the day star rise in your heart. Yes. So it talks about the morning, but here it talks about a spiritual morning, yes. something that happens in the heart. Yes. Amen. So this is what I want us to speak on today. Amen. Yes. So when and then. Peter says, hold on unto that word of prophecy. Mm. Once you, you receive the word of your day, a uh, day break may not happen immediately, but the Bible says, treat that word of prophecy like a candle in the night. You know, when, when you need direction, you've got a torch or a, a, some form of little light. You don't switch it off and say, what does it help? I can't see everything. Yeah. You stick with that torch. Right. You may not see everything, but you will see where you are stepping. Amen. And that will help you find your way. Amen. And as you are walking, the Bible says, the more you walk into that light, as the book of Jeremiah says, in that light you see light. So you start off with a little light. You read in the introduction where uh, of the book of the seven church ages. Mm. Brother Brandon says, uh, this ch- the revelation of the church ages is it is a form of a light yeah. 
uh, that leads to the greater life. You cannot Hallelujah. understand the seals until you understand the church ages. Because yeah. how, are you, how are you going to understand what the seventh seal is? Unless you know that this has to come in the seventh church age. So there's a light that leads to another light. Yeah, right. Jesus Christ says, John, you, you rejoice to walk in John's light. Mm. But John had a little light. And then yeah. Jesus comes and lives the greater light. Yeah. So there's a starting point. Amen. Yeah. As hey. Christians, when we go through our dark hours, we have to know that there's one thing that we can hold on to and that will bring us into that realm where we start understanding things in fullness. Amen. Ah, right. And that is the weight of prophecy. Ah, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, once we have the weight of prophecy, uh, the weight of a prophecy is something in seed form. Mm. Uh, Paul says, uh, Jesus Christ who in whom you rejoice, though you have not yet seen. Mm. Right. So there is something that gives that joy. Mm. And when you are happy, there's something about, you know, your body is meant to, to receive something from the Lord. Yeah, the darkness is a, symbolizes all things of evil. Like yeah. then meant see people coming to him. And you say, I see a shadow over that one. Uh, and a shadow over that one. I see a lines, black lines crisscrossing over in the church. Mm. What was that? He said, I see it's a demon, it's a sickness, it's cancer. Yes. It's calling out for another cancer to come out for help. Okay. So all forms of, of evil comes in darkness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is why the Bible talks about there's a, when you are a believer, you are going through a dark hour, you are going under temptation. You have to know that there's only one thing that you must do yeah. is to hold on to that word of prophecy. Amen. And that word of prophecy is the thing that will bring you into joy. Amen. 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 So, and we're going to look back in scriptures and see all the characters of the Bible, how they've had their time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Okay, let's not. We'll just start to read stuff there. Amen. So, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. Alleluia. If you read in the Bible, read in the book of Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 16. Uh, maybe I want to read that uh, for now. Uh, Acts chapter 16. Here we are reading about Paul and Silas. They went out on missionary work. They preached the gospel and uh, and they, they just did a very, very good job where there was a lady who was possessed, a young girl who was possessed, and uh, immediately when she saw them coming into her area, the Bible says she continually followed them day by day. She said, was screaming, here are the servants of God that bring us good tidings from the Lord. And then one day, the Spirit of God anointed Paul and he turned around and he cast out that demon. Amen. And when he cast out that demon, out of all that good work he has done, he was supposed to receive maybe from a, maybe some kind of reward. But we see what the devil does. Immediately when Paul was having this testimony and all that, he comes. And then he turns the whole thing around. When the owners of that girl were when they were using her in a divining or as a zangoma, they mm. realized what Paul has done. They went to the to the officials of the city. They told them there are men who are bringing confusion here. We need to get them out of this place. Mm. So Paul and Silas were arrested, and we know that they were beaten. Yeah, they were beaten, and the next thing they were delivered to the prison house. Yeah, and a jailer was told. Put them in the inner court. Put them in the dungeon. A dungeon is not your ordinary prison. Yeah. It's a prison in the ground. Yeah. So there's no way to escape. There's no window. There's nothing. Yeah. Amen. So they were assigned to that dungeon. And as they were there, in that dark hour, when everything looks like it had failed, you know, the brother Bram talks about possessing the enemy's gates after trial. Yes. Amen. It's a very dark hour. You can read back in the Bible. You can check it in the book of Job. Uh, you can check it after Job has done the sacrifice. You know what happened. Amen. After he has just done something good for the Lord, made a sacrifice and prayed for his children, the brother was saying it. You know what happened? The devil came. Yes. After Elijah did the good work of, of the Lord, after he has slain all the false prophets, then Jezebel was after Amen. Yes. There are those dark hours in our life. And then when you go through your dark hour, just remember that joy comes in the morning. Amen. But before 
you come to the morning, you have to enjoy the dark season. Hey, and how you enjoy the dark season is to take the word of prophecy for your day yes. and stay with it. <laughs> now the Bible says, as these men, they were beaten, and not just beaten, they were bound. Head and, I mean, hands and feet are bound uh, and put in prison. The Bible says, somewhere in the middle of the night, instead of sitting and complaining about this one has not done this, how can we be in this position after we've done so much work for the Lord? You know how the devil comes around. Mm. After I've done something great for the Lord, he, finds, he always finds a fault. Yes, yes. He did that with the Lord Jesus Christ. After he has just received the Holy Ghost yeah. and, and he was anointed to, to go on a fast. <laughs> At the end of the fast, yeah. when he was fully charged with God's power, yeah. the devil comes. He doesn't yeah. say, no, well done. He says, no. Yeah. You can do something here. Yeah. You can just, just to cast a shadow over what he was doing. Yeah. Yes. Amen. So this man, instead of complaining about the situation, the Bible says he started singing. And this is where I want to take our scripture from. I want to read that portion so that you can see there is a joy. Once, 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 once you turn into, once if you are in darkness, and then you keep on staying with the weight of prophecy. Though there's nothing promising, there's nothing showing. When you stay on that, something starts happening. A little light starts showing. And that light, if you hold on to it, eventually something, the day breaks, something opens up, something is revealed to you. So the Bible says, Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, instead of sitting there talking about my brother, what do you think, what happened here? We shouldn't have had that outreach. Just look what happened to us. I mean, we didn't have... We could have gone somewhere else. Mm. The Bible says they started singing. Amen. Mm. Remember, we read a verse in the book of Psalms. It says, Sing unto the Lord, ye saints of his. Hallelujah. When you remember his holiness. Now, this man, instead of looking at their situation, they looked at the way. And when they began singing, when they began singing, something came down. They got an anointing. Amen. That anointing was so strong that nothing could stand in front of it. That joy Hallelujah. that came down. Remember, it says, when the praises go up, His blessings come down. So, something, a joy came in their hearts. And as that joy came in, the first thing is, it, it broke the chains loose. Yeah. Opened the prison doors. And those men were free. Hallelujah. And so free were they that they didn't even feel they were in prison. They didn't have to run. Amen. They were already free. Yes. Then there was a, 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 a jailer there, as the Bible calls him, a prison warder, if you want to call it, yeah. who was bound by fear. Yeah. But the joy in this man, he was bound in his sin. His family was in sin. Yeah. And the joy that came down that night, yes. it went and loosed that man. Yes. Yes. So when, when they started singing, when the joy of the Lord came, they started seeing what the Lord has done, what God has used them to do. Then power came down, and everybody that was bound was released. Hallelujah. Starting with them and the other prisoners, the jailer house was unlocked, the, the jailer there was loose, they went to his house. And the way the, the magistrate, after Paul and them were beaten and were assigned to jail, this is the message that the, 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 the magistrate had to give to them when they were sent to jail. Yeah. I think it's in verse, uh, verse 22. The Bible says that, and the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had many stripes upon them, they cast them un unto, into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having uh, received such a charge, thrust them into an inner prison and made and made their feet fast onto the stocks. Amen. Yeah. So the yeah. ministry had, 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 was thinking something evil. He was thinking, you know what? After these men are beaten, let me go and think about them tonight. Yeah. Put them safely for me. I'm coming for them. Put them for me aside. Put them in the inner prison. Then when these men realized the situation, they didn't go complaining. They knew how to tap into God's power. So they started singing, and when they started singing, something came down. Oh, yeah. That joy, that the, the, 
that was not a silent joy. Even even the other prisoners had them. Amen. There was something that was happening. That joy was so bubbling in their heart. The Bible says the other prisoners said before the jail opened, joy took over. Hallelujah. Then the prison opened. Then the next morning, all right, they they took that jailer to his house. You know the story. They baptized him, him and his family. Amen. And 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 you know what? He released them. Amen. Hallelujah. So he was expecting the magistrate to come in the next morning and say, Where are those men? Where are those men that are truly to, to keep safe? Yeah. See what that joy did. That man at his house, if you read in verse 35, see what happened to him. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the, the sergeants saying, Let those men go. Hallelujah. That man didn't have any charge. He didn't know what to do. The first thing when he realized, ah, there are some men that we beat and we put them safe last. There was a reason for jailing them. Amen. He couldn't find any charge in his heart. He just said, you know what? I don't even want to, you to bring them before me. Just let them go. Amen. So when joy comes down, there's nothing that can stand in the path. Amen. It, 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 it loses everything. Amen. Uh, you know about that. Killer bull. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Branham was uh, doing his routines as a patrolman, and uh, somewhere he came to a camp. Uh, in that camp, there was a bull that is was known to to, to be a killer bull. Yeah. Yeah. He has killed uh, uh, people. He has killed other animals. So he he stopped. He forgot about that bull. So he went through the fence, he jumped the fence, he laid his gun on the side, and as he was walking in the, in the camp, right in front of him was that bull. Yeah. So, and his account, his testimony is that when he saw that bull, he realized he wasn't angry, he wasn't afraid. He yeah. says the first thing is, a feeling came over him, oh, and he looked at the bull, and he loved it. Yeah. You can't love if you are angry. Yeah. 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 So there's something that came in, his, and that that thing that came, that joy that came in his heart. Amen. Not only did it go to his heart, it went to the bull. Yeah. And he started talking to the bull. He said to the bull, I, "I think many people that have been killed by that bull, they tried to speak to it or speak over <laughs> but they didn't have what it took Amen. to to bring that bull." To listen to them. So Amen. this man, being anointed of God, when he spoke to the bull, he told the bull, you know what? I'm sorry that I disturbed you and I crossed your camp. Mm. In fact, I've got a, a sister that is sick that I need to pray for. Mm. If you don't mind, if you just go back in your shade and allow me to pass to and pray for a believer, a child of God, that Hallelujah. is in the That bull just went back in the shade and rested and he went into praise. What was that? It was something. He didn't say, ah, here I am. I'm here out here doing my routines. I could have just continued with my work. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about something very good in here, to pray for some, some someone, a sick believer. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, here is the killer bull. Why did God get me into this camp? No. Mm -hmm. When the darkest hour comes, he goes back to the promises of God. Amen. Amen. That I'm saying, if you do something right for God, the devil will never let you go through. He will take something Amen. over you. But what you need to do is to go back to the promises of God yeah. and, and sit on a promise there. Yeah. Sit on a word of promise. And that word, as you sit on it, the Bible says, that is your form of light. Amen. That sit there as a light and it's, it's happening all in your heart. Until you can see, you get a full revelation yes. of what is going to happen. Yeah. Amen. 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 You sit with that word of prophecy until something happens in your heart. Amen. Amen. Brother Branham will talk about uh, the times you come home and then after being away, and the sister will be very tired with all the people that have been coming. That you know, every sister that comes, mm. she needed to attend to. Them. Amen. Mm. Otherwise, you could have been out that day. You can't go to that prophet's house. That man can see visions and everything, but his wife. So, you know, she, she had to live uh, 
to make sure that you protect the office of that man. Yes. And, and remember when people are sick, they don't have the thing of saying, can you come after nine? Yes. Whenever they feel pain, they come. <laughs> so she always said, was receiving believers at her house, you know, making tea for this one, making tea for that other one. Uh, some didn't even have places to, to sleep. They would say, I sleep here in the couch. What happens to the family environment? Yes. Your kids can't even be returned. You're making noise. That man over there is sick. You're making noise. She can't pray for them. She's waiting for the husband. Maybe she doesn't even know when he's coming back. Yeah. With that situation, Brother Bram would come home and he says, when he looks at the wife, he can see that she was going through some emotion. Yeah. She was under a span of wounds. Then he would just start uh, talking to her and praying in his heart. And then something happens, when something happens in his heart, all of a sudden the mood goes out. Yeah. Because why? When you sit on a word of prophecy, the, the word in itself, remember the word is the thing that created this planet. Amen. Amen. So whether things are visible, whether things are not visible, Amen. in the presence of the joy of the Lord, there is nothing that can stand against them. So we have to overcome our sicknesses. That's yeah. why it says, Amen. when you worry, you fall sick. Yeah. You know, devil, just as long as you eat, how, you, how your body lives is you eat food. But what you are consuming there is not really the, the flesh of the, the, the fruits or whatever. Mm. But you are charging the energy yeah. that is stored in there, light and everything. So that energy, as you eat, it goes, that's what you're putting in. You're Amen. eating the energy yeah. from the, the food. So devil is also feed from the negative energy. Yeah. If you are a physical man, you will need physical food. Yeah. Natural things to touch and eat, put in your mouth. Amen. That's where, and then you harvest that energy. That's where your, your lungs are extracting all those juices and everything from the then the pulp goes out, yeah. right? But devils don't need food. They just need negative thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It's an energy. Yeah. They give you something negative. Yeah. Once you stay on that negative thing, mm. then they, they've got food to stay in that house. Yeah. Negative thoughts, uh, bad biting, gossip, all these things, that is food for the evil spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So it stays there, and then once it feels comfortable, he tells the other demons, hey, there's food in the house. <laughs> then you know what it tells me. Amen. 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 So, when you talk about joy comes in the bodies, the weight of God, which is the life, has, you have to keep the weight in your heart all the time. Amen. And as the weight is in your heart, the devil will try to throw things at you. Remember, uh, the Bible talks about those four, 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 four types of ground how the seed was planted. And this one, this one type of ground, says when the seed fell there, it fell into good ground. It was received with joy. Yeah. And that joy and effort made way for the seed to push through. Mm -hmm. So once you receive the joy of the Lord, the Bible says, and when the Gentiles had these things, they received the word with gladness. They received the word with joy. And that joy that they received the word with allowed them, as we read further on, Allow them to take all those books of witchcraft and everything to get them bent. Amen. It's the power that you need. Nothing can stand in front of the joy of the Lord. Amen. 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 But that joy is stored in the way. It's sitting there uh, in the way of prophecy. Then you sit on that way, and then the light starts multiplying. It starts adding in your heart. The Bible says you sit on that way until the day uh, the the day star rises in your heart. Then the prophet talks about it is the rising of the sun. Yeah. Where? Amen. Where is this sun rising? Hallelujah. The sun is rising in your heart. The sun yes. rising in your heart is all the darkness is removed. Oh, yes. All the things that you don't understand are removed. Amen. Remember, when you don't understand how you're going to get out of the situation, that's when you start complaining. Yeah. 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 If you've got answers, you don't have a problem. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you run out of petrol, you see your your your, your light is showing you. You are running low on, on fuel. Mm. If you know you've got money in your pocket, you don't know what it is. Yeah. You might even forget and drive past a, a filling station. Yeah. But when you don't have money, immediately <coughs> when that light comes on, you know you've got trouble. Yeah. You start worrying. 
You start worrying. You now you start complaining. You, start, you you can even cause an accident because now you are you are sitting in this dark cloud. Yeah. Because you don't have you don't know how you're going to solve the problem. The same with natural with spiritual challenges. Once we hit a, a, a challenge, you the devil covers you with some darkness. If you stay with the word of prophecy, that's where your answer is going to come from. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's read in the book of uh, Chronicles. Uh, Let's read to the second book of Chronicles, amen. The joy of the Lord. David says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. So, second book of, book of Chronicles. You would have read the story many times. But let's see what God can do if we stay in His weight and the weight. Start releasing. When the Bible says the weight has to take grip. The book of Isaiah, it says the word of God shall not return unto God void. So yeah. all the promises of God are sitting with a potential to do something for you. Amen. But you just have to give it a chance in your heart to let it take a grip yes. and, and open up and start releasing the power like any Amen. other plant. Because you plant it is in seed form. But that seed, once it receives sunlight, not, not fully in the sun, yeah. under the ground, just like you, you hold on to the word of prophecy. You don't see as yet what is going to happen, but you got a promise. Yeah. You, you know something, there's something real about this way. Mm. A seed under the ground, it receives not direct sunlight, but just the warmth of the ground. Amen. That seed sitting in there, it knows this. There's a, there's a word of prophecy out there. Yeah. Something great is out there. Then that seed gets the joy. And when it gets joy, then it starts breaking all the crust. Oh, yes. The Bible says, like a, like a tender root out of dry ground. Mm -hmm. Like a tender plant out of a dry ground. That is in the book of Isaiah. It's a picture of Christ. Now you can imagine something growing in a dry ground. What it has to go through. So the word of God, it just needs to be given a chance in our heart. Amen. And when you sit there, you don't need the greatest of all faith. You just need a mustard seed faith in your heart. That's, that faith alone. That faith alone. Take what that woman, the, the woman with a, a blood issue. Yes, sir. The Bible, she, she, she has spent her money, she went everywhere. Amen. She couldn't be helped. She spent all her goods until she was poor, still having a problem. But she heard about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, something started working in her life. Amen. That immediately, before she even came in the presence of Jesus, Amen. something told her, you are going to be healed. Amen. She couldn't resist going out. She had to go out. And when she came to where Jesus was, it was not like, you know, it was not like us, you know, when each one is going to sit. No. There was, there, there were always multitudes around Jesus. Amen. Amen. Read the story of that woman. Amen. It was not like she went to Jesus and grabbed the hem of his garment. No, she had to push. Yeah. She had to push through Amen. the multitudes. And multitudes are very strong men. Amen. She pushed. Because there was something in her telling her, you, you, you are dead. You, you just need to touch him. Amen. Already she, she, she could feel the, the healing. And when she, she grabbed, remember the hem. The hem is the bottom line of a garment. Yeah. Right? So she didn't touch him on the shoulder. In that multitude, you can imagine how did she even get to the hem of that yes, yes. To try and lean down. Maybe she was even falling. Yes. Maybe she was even tripping and falling, and yeah. the, the nearest thing she could see was the hem of that garment. As this man was walking, she grabbed it. Yeah. And that, that, that was it. She didn't have to have an audience with him. Just what was in her heart brought her into a, a full healing. Amen. 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 So in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 20, and, and I'm going to try and read here. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to read from verse 5. This is uh, the victory of the children of Israel. 
when <coughs> the Moabites and the Ammonites came against them. And they came all the way from the land of, of Egypt. And you know how God told them, when you come to the land of uh, the mountain of Seir, don't even try, try, try to travel the, the, the sons of uh, uh, Esau. I've given them the land. Mm. Don't fight with them over there. So they went past the land until they came into the, their promised land, mm. which is the land of Canaan. And as they were there, the enemy routed. Yes. The enemy decided, you know what, we, we just let some people pass here. Why did we not stop them? Mm. So they decided we are going to challenge them. Mm. They just done a good act. The Israelites did not fight the, the Moabites. They, they kept to the word of prophecy. But after doing that good act, now the Moabites wants to fight them. They could have destroyed the Moabites. Yeah. So after doing a good act of God, the devil always cast a shadow. Yeah. And I'm going to read from verse 5, and it reads as follows. And Jehoshaphat uh, stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, Art thou not God in heaven? Rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the, of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand the thee? Art thou not our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people uh, Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend? Forever, and they dwelt therein, and they and they have built there the a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and, and Mount Seir, whom thou wilt just not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they want us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Amen. Amen. Now, they have come across a situation. The enemy is now fighting them for not invading them. Yeah. They have done a good act. Now these people come and this man goes to God says, Is this how it should be that you told us not to invade them? Hey. And you gave us this land. Now they want to remove us. This man is not going anywhere complaining to God. He is going back to the work of prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. He's telling Amen. God, you gave us this land. This is the land of our possession. And moreover, we built a sanctuary for your name Amen. in this place. Hallelujah. Now we are seated here. It's not like, God, if you don't do this, I will do this. We are sitting here. These people are surrounding us. We don't know what to do. Mm. We are looking upon thee. Amen. Not God, if you don't know this, I'm going back to the world. <coughs> he doesn't have a plan B. He's telling God, we are not only really looking at you and we don't have, know what to do. Not that I will do this. If uh, you don't give me this, I will divorce. If you don't give me this, I, I won't pay time. If, no, not those things. You I see, he, he stood by on the word of prophecy. And when he stood there, God said, there's a man that needs my help. And he's, he's looking at the promises that I made. So God had to intervene. Hallelujah. Now we read further on. 13. And all Judah stood before the Lord and with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Amen. So they all came as this man was praying. They all supported. They were all in one accord. Then upon Then upon Jah Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Matania, 
a Levite of the sons of Asaph came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, He can hear all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thou king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Tomorrow go ye down against them, behold, they come up by the cliff of this, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Amen. Amen. Now, as this man was in this hour of darkness with the nation, he went back to the way of prophecy. And he told God, we, we've got no other way. We are only trusting in you. Amen. They didn't know how God was going to answer. In those days, they didn't have a prophet in their midst. But because of the stand they took with the word of God, the spirit of God came down. And one of them that never prophesied before, prophesied that day. Hallelujah. The spirit anointed that man and he spoke prophecy to them. He told them, you don't need to fight. I've already, I've already had your prayer. I've already went and started doing something in the in, in, in the battle there. All you need to do is to go and meet with them and go and see my salvation. They found favor with God. And when you find favor with God, the favor of God takes you very fast. Amen. Amen. Because they stood, they stood with the weight. That's where you find for favor. If you back, look back at Noah, how he found favor. When the whole world of his day was packed out in sin, that yes. means you by the way. Amen. And when you stand by the way, you find favor with God. Amen. So God prophesied and told them, I just want you to go to the battleground just for formality. You're not going to fight. Yeah. No, tomorrow you're just going to see me fight. Yeah. So Amen. come through. Amen. Amen. Right, let's read on. Verse 16. Tomorrow you go ye down against uh, them, behold. Okay, let's skip to that one. That one. Verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the children of Kohite, and all the children of. Uh, All the all the high stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Right. So immediately when they had they had the word of prophecy, the Bible says they they took on the enemy still there. The enemy has not moved. But something came down. There was so much joy. They started singing. They don't care about the enemy. The thing that came down. The prophecy that came down and the anointing that was upon them already loosed them out of all the situations. All the fear, they were loosed from the fear. The Bible says they started singing. Amen. The enemy was not dead. The, state, the enemy was still doing all the war formation yeah. there. They, yeah. was, they were standing in array. But these ones already, they knew something. Hallelujah. Something in them was telling them what God told you is going to happen. Yeah. The Bible says they started singing. Not only did they sing it, if you read the next verse, it says, verse 20, they rose early in the morning. Yeah. So it means they sang and they went to bed. They were singing, it was the night before when the word of prophecy came. They sang, and after they sang and there was joy in the camp, there was no need to worry. They went to sleep. They didn't have to worry, hey, check that enemy must not come. They went to sleep. That joy was enough. Yeah. Whether the enemy was moving closer or standing there, it was not their problem. The joy in them had taken control because they started realizing joy in the morning when vision, when the vision was revealed to them, what is going to happen? 
That is, that is their model. <coughs> when they start seeing clearly what is going to happen, they do not, you know, if you know what is going to happen, you don't, you don't panic. You don't panic. If you know what is going to happen, you don't, not even a slight fear. No, sir. No, there's no need. Yes. I don't know if I was telling this group here or somewhere about some interviews I had. And when when we arrived at this place, uh, I received a letter to come for an interview. Uh, and the letter stated, this is for the application that you sent to us. I looked at this company, I don't know them, I've never heard about them. They're telling me I applied. I never applied. <laughs> but because I was desperate, I came to it was here in Hatfield. Mm. So I arrived <coughs> and in Hatfield, and as I walked through, you know, very nervous and uh, at the reception, everything, you know, when you are new in a place, everything looks uh, splendid. You don't want to touch anything. So I was walking there, and this lady at the reception says, uh, Sir, can we help you? I said, Yes, I'm here for interview. I produced my letter for the invitation. They said, Okay, fine. Have a seat, and they gave me a seat there in the reception. There's a cost area there. And they said, Would you like to have water or, or coffee? I said, Nothing. I was very much afraid. We want travel, <laughs> waiting for the interview. So I was sitting there, and then here comes one man, you know, very confident, a white man, you know, shoulders out like this, and then he was, and his smile almost brightened in that place. Mm. I looked at this man and said, whoa, this man is so happy. Mm. You know, when people are, like, they've been in the company for a long time, they don't see anything. Yeah. I thought, this man has, must have been in this company for years. And he greeted the ladies, and as he turned, he said, Hi, how are you? And I stood up, and all, you know, very formal, tried to be composed, he stretched out my hand, he says, I know you. I said, hey, I don't know you. He says, I know you. He insisted. I said, I don't know you. He says, but uh, I know you. I said, okay, fine. So, and then, uh, he said, he looks at me, he says, you look very uh, healthy. I said, thank you, sir. He says, now it's time to be wealthy. So, what did this man say? He walked out, and as he walked out, these ladies at the reception, there were two ladies there. After he walked out, they said, do you know who that is? I said, no. He said, that is the owner of the company. They said, whoa, oh, something is happening. That man knows me. I tried to send him, I don't know, he insists he knows me. He's the owner of the company. Something right there, right there, just to know who was telling me all this thing. He's insisting he knows me. I don't know him. He, he, he tells me I need to be uh, uh, wealthy. I'm looking healthy. This is the owner of the company. He must be having something for me. Yeah. Immediately, he didn't have to say anything. Just hearing those words, that put me a step up. Yeah. So this lady, they were started talking to me. Hey, you know, that guy, would you like to have something? I said, yes. <laughs> Cappuccino. <laughs> so something had already loosened it. Yeah. You know, I, 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 something was already. I, nobody told me anything. But I could see the light was coming through. Yeah. I could see what is going to happen. The owner greeted me with a smile and he told me all these good things. Mm. As I was sitting there, two, three guys, three guys came through. A student also coming for interviews. And they came just after the men walked off and they started talking to me. Uh, as they were talking to me, they were asking me, what, where are you from? And uh, I told them. And uh, then I started interrogating them. Remember, they're the same as me. Mm. But when I was asking them questions, I was demanding answers. Yeah. Because I was already at another level. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody told you anything, but I could feel it. Yeah. Something was already pumping at you. What, what did you study? Did you pass well? No. I was there. They just say, hey, this man is great, man. Yeah. So <clears throat> then came time. They didn't even want to have anything. I was no, I was sitting there, you know, resting, having my cappuccino. 
These guys didn't even know to have a water. I used to be in their situation. I used to be in the dark ages, but still the joy came. Uh, I know something is going to happen. Something is starting to show. It's not yet full daybreak, but it's the morning. Something is showing. I can see these things are. I never applied for them, yeah. and this man is already telling me he knows me. So we were called to a boardroom, and we walked through the passage, and you know, those guys from uh, Valtech, they came there, they were, you know, walking behind me. When we were called, I jumped, I took my file, I was working, already working like an employee there, because something was working in me. I got in the boardroom, a very big table, and uh, as we were seated there, the boys uh, went, to, uh, three of them, they were holding a corner, they were trying to caucus, they were trying to keep close. I went to have my own chair and I was swinging on the chair. They were going to, what's happening with this one? Something was bubbling, something was happening in me. So a few men came through, and uh, but the owner was not there. I looked at them. I realized hey, these ones are not that men. Mm. But that's, that's the company ownership. They give me trouble. I'm going back to those ladies and tell them I want to see that man who knows me. Yeah. These guys are so afraid. They don't know what's going to happen to them. They don't know whether they're going to be absorbed in the company or not. But already I've got a word of prophecy. Mm. Hallelujah. I look healthy and I must become wealthy. Yeah. So I was holding on to that statement. Yeah. Something there must be wealth for me in this company. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so, so, and then after some time, the owner came through, and as he walked through, he smiled. He looked at us. He says, "Guys, don't worry. This is not the interview." I saw those guys started relaxing, but I was already ahead. <laughs> he told them, "Listen, you didn't want to be that you are the best student, so we decided to offer you bursaries." We are going to show you how much the company is making. They were saving tea, things, you know, blah, 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 nice things there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to chow sparingly. No, the boss told me everything. When I chowed, I chowed serious because <laughs> it, I, I was really welcome. You see? Uh, but that is something. So, when something starts happening, yeah. th this man, before he even told me, I could already see myself walking through the passages and everything. Because there was something that gave me some indications. Yeah. All right. So the same thing happens here. And eventually we were taken in the company, by the way. Ah, we are dropped into the company. But because I I, I, I received the word of prophecy first. Mm. Those guys, every time when we ran into trouble, we were all the best students from where we came from. Mm. All right. Oh but God. the difference between me and them is I had the word of prophecy. I was yeah. taught something. <laughs> about somebody. Then I realized this man knows me, me and I don't know him. They didn't know who's the company owner. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell them anything, but he told me something. Amen. And that alone just gave me strength to walk in the passages and everything. Yeah. And every time they came through, there was a problem in the West Face. They, they didn't have the guts to go to that man. Mm -hmm. They come to me. Mm -hmm. Says, hey man, we're having a problem. I said, who's that? Immediately I stand up. Mm -hmm. Because I we were already employed, yeah. but that thing gave me a head start. I was already ahead of them. Yeah. So they were looking up to me as someone who's a leader because I had something in me. Amen. Something that I had before they could hear. Yeah. This Bible is exactly what it's doing for you and me. Yeah. 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 Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, let, let's get to the, the scriptures here. Uh, we're going to read uh, verse 20, right? And it says, uh, they, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tepwa. And as they went forth, the horse of God stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. Now, this man, they rose up in the morning, and before the enemy is even taken out of the way, He's reminding them of yesterday's happening. He Amen. says, fear not Israel. Believe in the Lord and believe his prophets. Because somebody just prophesied the day before. He's already removing fear, but just using the word of prophecy. But the enemy is still out there. 
standing in array, waiting for the battle, but Israel is already uh, pronouncing victory because why? Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Joy comes in you once something starts showing. You can start seeing the light that something is going to happen. This is how the day is going to be. Amen. You can see things that are around you, things that were not visible. They could see the victory. They knew very well it's just a matter of time. Those ones are waiting for us there. We won't even engage them into battle. Amen. According to the word of prophecy, don't even worry, brothers. Uh, whatever you put on there, just put on as a uh, dress up as a soldier, but you're not going to use that spear. Yeah. According to the word of prophecy, even if those men are waiting for us, we don't know what's going to happen, but they will not engage us in a battle. Amen. That's for sure. But God didn't, didn't tell them how. <coughs> like if you check the next verse, uh, uh, should be verse. Right, let's go to verse. Verse 21. And when he had once, when he has consulted with the people, and he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the, the beauty of his holiness. Remember the book of Psalms says, uh, when you remember the holiness of the Lord, sing ye unto the Lord. Amen. There's that joy, you need to be happy about the situation you are in. Amen. When you get in trouble, it's not time to cry and say, what's going to happen to me? You know, you when you get in trouble, the Bible says, rejoice when you when you get into diverse temptations. Because you, are, you know the power that is just about to be. Yeah. You know, if you've got uh, if you've got a, uh, I'll say if you've got a, a torch or if you've got a light and you are going into, you know, you've got this new torch that you just bought. And they told you it's like a maybe it's like a, a hunting light. It can shine up to far. You, you yeah. can't wait for the darkness, man. Ah, you man. can't wait for the darkness to test this thing. Yeah. When everybody's worried about the darkness and everything, so you are waiting there. Mm. As it gets darker, people are running around in. Can I have this? Can I have a candle? You don't want that. You feel ah, this darkness is not enough. My thoughts going to blast this thing. Ah, yeah. I need the proper darkness. Yeah. So you can't wait for the tra the travel to get higher. You know the Bible says when the the enemy comes in like a flood. Amen. Yes. So it's not like when the water is up to your ankle. That's not a flood. <laughs> that doesn't activate you. Yeah. When it comes to a waistline, that's not a flood. Yeah. People get in the swimming pool, the, the water is up to their waistline. They are not in a flood. Yeah. So even when the water comes to your neck, that's not a flood. Yeah. You are still waiting. You can't wait for the water to start reaching your nose. Then you know something is gonna happen. Yeah. You are not panicking because there's a little problem there. No, yes. when you've got joy in your heart, Amen. you know what you are capable of, yes. and yes. you know that you've got a missile. Yes. You're not going to use a missile to shoot a little thing. Uh -huh. You wait for the thing to be big enough so that you can scatter it properly. Amen. You can scatter it into pieces. But you can't wait for a little thing you want to shoot it. Now it's a waste of resources, it's a waste of weapons now. Amen. You want it to be big enough. Yeah. Because you want to see debris flying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So when you've got something in you, when the troubles are getting, the problem is getting darker and darker. Mm. You are looking there. Mm. You are holding to the weight of prophecy. You are feeling it. Amen. You can feel this thing. Uh, this darkness is not big enough. Yes. Mm. Let it gather more. Amen. Give it the power. The moment something puts pressure on you, that power strikes out. Just like Samson. Samson, Samson, he was an ordinary man who had something about him. Yeah. All right? And then little trouble couldn't get that man activated. Yes. No, what do you know? They talk about this is happening and that's many subjects. But then, when there's a real problem, he becomes an iron man. He is not an ordinary man. Now he can pick up a gate, he can kill a thousand men with a jawbone. He that's what he that that's the thing that activated that thing in him. Amen. The only thing he had to stay with that power that was in him. Amen. Not tamper with it, just respect it. Know that when that power is in him, something is gonna happen <coughs> at another level. When a trial becomes bigger, it activates that power. Amen. That power, once it's released. Nothing is going to stand in his way. Now, maybe to cut this thing short, uh, what is happening here in the chest? They started singing. 
And the Bible says, when they started singing, because he had put up singers, uh, he told them, don't worry, believe in the prophecy. He set up singers, and they started praising the Lord. And the Bible says, as they praised, as they praised the Lord, when the praises went up, then the, the power of God came down. Amen. And it went into the armies of, of the Moabites. Yes. And they started killing each other. Yeah. They started killing one another for some reason. Yeah. So Israel, as they came, only to find that the joy of the Lord is there to make a way. Nothing can stand Amen. in the way of a, a city that has been dramatized. Yeah. Amen. I, was, I was seeing somewhere where they showed how a, a, a little seed came through the cracks of a concrete bridge. Yeah. Nothing, try to plant something there yourself, but that thing is locked in there, but the moment that bridge gets hit, and that little seed in there gets activated, yeah. Yeah. and it's that, so it wants to praise the Lord. It wants to raise its two little plates and say, Hallelujah! Amen. You can't do it in that, ah. it must crack that, that concrete. Amen. It must rise with that power and say, Praise God! Then you, the two the plates come out, yeah. then it starts growing. Amen. But you need to, you just need to let that weight of God sit in the presence of the Let God see that weight in you. Yeah. When God sees the weight in you, He starts working on it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we need. Our... So the Bible says they went killing each other. When Israel got there, they realized hey, this thing that is in us is so powerful. Amen. That thing when it was in David, I mean in, in, in Solomon, the Bible says God gave you peace round about. No one was even intending to fight with that thing. He has something so, so 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 powerful in him that even a thought of war escapes you. You yeah. can't even think of fighting that man. All you think is to pay taxes to that man. Yeah. So that same power is in us, believers. Oh yes. All the situations, all the challenges of yeah. life that we are facing, we just have to understand that if this thing can change your body, if it can change your body. Why can it not change something out of there? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says when the capstone, the capstone came, it came down with shouting, joy, joy, Amen. grace, grace, grace. It is that same power that is now in the church. The Bible talks about the rising of the sun. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is joy in the world. When the, start, the sun starts shining in our hearts, the revelation of this hour, it brings such a power in yeah. us. Amen. Such a power to know that this planet, we are not going to be sitting here and worrying about the political situation. We know exactly what's going to happen. Yes. Amen. This planet belongs to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not just a statement. We know what we're saying. Amen. This planet is ours. Amen. According to the word of God, we own this. Amen. And we are not going to fight with squatters as they uh, are. <laughs> now they can, they can name it. Uh, Pretoria, what, 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 what? That it's just a matter of time. Then this place is good. When we come back after it gets burned, according to the book of uh, uh, Malachi chapter four, mm -hmm. uh, and and the wicked shall be like ashes under your feet. So uh, immediately after the planet has burned, right, with fire, we are coming back here. Yeah. We're going away three and a half. Then after it burns with fire, we are coming back here. Yes. Yes. And when we come back here, the whole, this place will be clean. There will be no university. Yeah. There will be no. There will be no. There will be no tree. Yes. Yeah. There will be no tree. When we come, it will be ashes. You read your Bible, Mark chapter four. Amen. The wicked shall be like ashes under our feet. Then when we step here and this place is all in ashes, then we start speaking. Yeah. Let there be what and this place come. Then we we build it. We built this Amen. place from start. Oh yes. Amen. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. That's the promise that we have. Now we shouldn't be worried about this. Thing. Oh, the only thing is, when you go to your dark hour, just remember, stay with the word of God. Hey. Stay with the promise, and that promise itself is got that energy. And once you start releasing the energy, and you see how God is going to avoid <coughs> this thing, how God is going to get you out of this problem, that power alone. Before even the problem is solved, that power alone 
will, will set you floating. You don't need to sit there in your corner like you are catching cold. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, saints. And so we shall start in here for today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's just sing a song as uh, my brother is coming. Amen. My brother, let's walk in the light. Let's walk in the light. Let's walk in the light. Walk in the light of God. My brother, let's walk in the light. Let's 